In today's lesson, we're going to look at total variation, explained variation, and unexplained variation as it relates to sums of squares and see if a visual picture and uh, also a numerical example in Excel, if that'll help solidify these ideas. Okay, so over on our right, we have our regression line from the data on the left and just to make our lives easier instead of using the actual uh, mean value of our y at negative 1.285 let's just say that it is exactly negative 1 so this line here is going to be y bar okay now again just to illustrate the point let's say that we had a data value here in our data set now the total variation is the distance between that data value and the predicted y value of negative one. So let's say this is up here at, um, oh, we'll make it 79, just so the math is easy. So the actual total variation is 80. That's the difference between the predicted y and the actual observed y. So that means that somewhere in our data set we actually had an input of let's say that's above 5. My graph's a little off but just to make the numbers easy. Alright, so somewhere in our data set is this value. I don't know why all of a sudden it wants to make it red. we will leave it red. Okay, the variation is 80. Now, according to our regression line, if we were above 5, if we put 5 into our regression line, it's going to spit out that as a prediction. Now, we could go over here and we could actually use the coefficients, right? We could use this equation of the regression line and we can get the exact prediction that it would give us for x equals 5 but again just to make the math easier for us let's just say that when we put in 5 it gives us a value of oh how about 50 So that is our predicted y, usually with a y hat, uh, for when x equals 5. Right? So we would have this uh, x and predicted y would be 5, comma, 50. Okay, so when we aren't able to do regression or just before you know if we don't do regression the best point estimate the best guess we have for y given any x is just simply y bar that's the best we can do is just do the average of our entire set and say hey no matter what x you give me the best guess I have for a y that's going to appear is going to be the average or the mean of my entire set so that's kind of our baseline and then we realize, you know what, we've got more sophisticated statistical tools at our disposal. Rather than just doing a mean, we can actually do this regression analysis. And in this case, we did a linear regression, and we came up with this beautiful little line here. And it is much more powerful at predicting our Ys. Instead of just giving us the same answer over and over again, it gives us this lovely formula and says that when you have a certain x, right, you multiply it by roughly negative 3.58, add 70.3 to it, 
and that's going to be your predicted y. So, our best guess y bar, our actual observed y value, right? And the difference between those is 80. So that's the total variation for when x equals 5. Our point estimate of y bar is off by a distance of 80. Our line, our regression line, it accounts for some of that variation, that difference, right? Going from this bad guess to what it actually is, we get this distance here of 51. And that's the amount of variation that is explained by the model. The model can take this bad guess and get it closer to the actual observed amount. Remember we're saying that somewhere in our data we actually had an input of 5 and an output of 79. So in this case it was an altitude of 5,000 and a temperature of 79 which is ridiculous, but that's just for our example. Then the unexplained variation, that's the amount that the um, model can't explain. It's kind of like its error. It's, it's it, the amount that it is still off by. And in that case, graphically, it's that bit right there, drawn poorly, but it's that distance from 50 up to 79, so a distance of 29. So we can see that the, uh, the total variation, right, remember was 80, that was top to bottom, that's always going to equal the explained variation plus the unexplained variation. And in this case, the explained variation was 51 and the unexplained is 29. Is the explained always bigger than the unexplained? No. Are they always positive? No. It all depends on where the points are. It all depends on what your average is. All sorts of things will, will change these numbers up. But the bottom line is this always holds true. Explained plus unexplained equals total. It's basically what the model tells you, plus the error, gets you to the actual observed amount. Okay? Now, how that works numerically is over here. You'll see that all I've done is I've used Excel to, to calculate some things. So this, this here is our predicted Y. I'm going to use Y tilde as um, the symbol for it. And all I asked Excel to do was take X multiply it by the uh, the slope here the three point negative three point one add seventy to it right and that ends up giving you the predicted y so these are all the outputs you would get from the model so if I put fifteen in the model it's going to spit out this value here which is pretty close to twenty so these are my predicted y's now according to the formula total variation variation is the sum of all the y values the observed y values minus the mean right, minus the average of the y's squared so you take the difference between each observed y you subtract the mean from it it's kind of like we're doing a standard deviation right it's its deviation from the mean you square it and you add them all up now currently i just have their differences i haven't squared them yet and you can see that when we add up this number here is the sum of all those when you add up all those differences, it adds up to zero. And these two numbers here are also zeros. It's just from rounding error that they don't end up actually being zero, right? It's negative 7 times 10 to the negative 14 and, and 8 times 10. Those are really, really small decimals. They're supposed to be zeros. It's just from rounding errors that they're not. So the next thing we have to do in our formula is just change this slightly. All I have to do is square everything. Now, copy that formula, and there are all of those squared. I'll do the same thing here. Square all of these. 
finally the last one here. Just for all of these. And you'll now see that this number plus this number equals that. And if you don't believe me, equals this plus this. Ta-da! Same thing. All right, so here's your explained variance. Here's your unexplained variance. Here's your total variance. And each of those numbers is the amount of variation. I'm sorry, I was saying variance, I meant variation. Uh, for each individual x. Right? So when x equals 13, there's a total variation of almost 691. 6, almost 28 of it is explained right by the model and there's 1.5 left over that's unexplained. In fact you can see that the unexplained here are all really small because the dots are all lining up pretty darn close to the line. We have this really really strong correlation. We have a really good model. This is just the total, right? All of those variations added up, all of those variations added up, all those variations added up. These are sometimes called sums of squares. So hopefully between the picture and seeing how you calculate them by hand you can better understand what it means when they talk about explained variation and unexplained variation it all comes down to we're trying to guess an output right you give me an input I give you an output you give me an X I give you a Y in this case you give me an altitude I give you a temperature right if we can't or we don't run any type of regression analysis the first best most basic analysis we can run that gives us a good guess for the output value of y is to just take the average of our set of y's. These are all the y's that we've observed so if we were going to guess what the next y would be based on a certain input our best guess is the average of those. So that's where we start. That's the y bar. And then we come along and realize we can be better than that. We're not going to just take the mean. We're going to do linear regression. And that's going to take into account all the different values instead of just looking at their average. It's going to look at their relationship between the x's and it's going to come up with this great little formula that's going to come up with a straight line. In this case, it doesn't have to be straight. We could be doing uh, curve regression, all sorts of different curves. So it comes up with that equation and now we have a different set of predicted y's. Instead of our predicted y's just always being negative 1.2857 blah blah blah, it's all of these numbers based on the formula that we came up with. But it's still not perfect. right? We can look at every single one of those observed dots and look at the difference between the observed dot and the y bar. right? And that is how far y bar, the mean is, from the actual observed amount. That's its variation. And then we can look at how much of that distance is basically explained by the model and how much is an error. So the explained variation is how good the model is, the unexplained variation is kind of like it's error. Hope that helps.